Hey guys, Susan Thomas here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make personalized jewelry by writing your name with wire. So one of the most personal gifts you can give is a gift of a name or a phrase or word that's really special to somebody. Everybody loves to wear a name necklace and uh, also a lot of people like to wear necklaces that say things like be brave or thrive or love or hope, something like that. So it's really fun. Thought I'd teach you guys how to do this. When you get started, it's best to practice with larger wire because we're actually going to be writing in wire. And don't feel like you have to go out and uh, find like a bunch of templates for how to make letters. Just use your own handwriting. It's more personal and I have for instance, very terrible handwriting, but it looks pretty good in wire. So this one says, be brave. I'm going to be doing my name in a 20 gauge wire today. I think you guys are gonna love it. All right, so I am going to be using a 20 gauge copper wire to get started with this project because I'm not gonna go big and be brave. I'm gonna be smaller and just write my name. And I decided to go a little bit larger than I usually do for my necklaces, but I'm gonna go this size right here. And see how I've got all lowercase letters? Pretty cute, right? So that's 20 gauge wire. Then you're also gonna need some tools. Most important is going to be a rounded tool. So you're definitely going to need a round nose plier. I'm also going to be using a plier called an AccuLoop plier. Why do I like this plier? Because as you can see, on the AccuLoop plier, all of the millimeter sizes are marked. So I know that if I'm working on that four millimeter size, all my letters are gonna be relatively the same size. Then you're gonna to wanna to have a flat nose and a chain nose plier, because you're gonna need that chain nose to get into some of the small places, and the flat nose to make some sharper bends. And you're going to need a good flush cutter as well. I have a piece of chain here. This is just a finished necklace that I cut the center of so I can attach to my letters or names. And then over here, I have a lot of extra stuff. These are polishing tools that I'm going to use. I'm using copper, and if I ever use copper, I always like to oxidize it and polish it back up again. It just gives it dimension. So you can do that if you've got copper or if you have sterling silver. But if you're using a plated wire, then you're probably not gonna need any of this stuff over here. Sound good? Let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start by pulling myself about 15 inches of this 20 gauge wire. Probably a little bit more than I need, but that'll be a good starting point. The worst part is if you get to the end and you're like an A, like I've spelled Sousa, and then I don't have enough to make the N. I mean, it's just awful, and then you gotta start over. So, you're gonna leave yourself a little bit of a tail. I have learned the hard way when I'm making these, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. These two I made first, and this is my favorite one I've ever made. This one, I don't know, it just, I love the way it looks, but because I put the little loops down at the bottom, it will not hang correctly on a necklace. So my only choice is to put it on a bracelet, which I will, but I wanted it to be a little necklace. And uh, so I was very disappointed. So you need to make sure that you leave enough wire so that you can pull the loops up higher above your name somehow so that it hangs right on your necklace, not upside down. So put those down. And I'm gonna do this size because it's a little bit bigger and I think it'll be easier for you guys to see. So very first step is we're going to get started. And a lot of this is done with your fingers. Some of it's done with your tools. I'm just going to kind of bend my wire up a little bit and I'm going to take a flat nose plier. So here's my tail. I'm going to take a flat nose plier and I'm going to bend this into a really, really sharp See that right there? Just a really, really sharp, almost a V shape. All right, so now you can see kind of what I've done. I moved some tools out of the way so you guys could really see what's happening here. So I've made a little, almost a, just a real sharp bend and then you just wanna pull that back out so it makes a little V shape. Then I'm gonna get started with my AccuLoop plier. And I want this S to be about four millimeters. So I'm going to wrap it around that four millimeter. Let me show you guys what I did here. And that way I know when I get to another S, I've used that four millimeter size and it'll be pretty close to the same size. Pretty easy, right? Then I'm gonna use a little two millimeter and I'm just gonna hold on to that S and curve around like so, making a little loop at the bottom. See that? So there's my tail. That's the piece I'm gonna use a little bit later. You can kind of whip it out of your way if you want to, but there's your S. 
So next step is to make a U. The only thing that to me is really important about this is that you make sure the bottom kind of stays in a line. The front, the top can be a little up and down because you know as you write, sometimes some letters are a little higher than the others. But if you try to keep it even along the bottom, they always look really good. So what I'm gonna do is take my round nose plier, and I have a lot of tools here, guys. I'll be just kind of moving them around as I go, and grab it right down close to the bottom of that S and try to get just even with that, and then bend this straight up so I can start my next letter. So you can kind of see what I've done there. And I almost left myself a little bit too much space, so let me give my flat nose plier and just bend it up a little sharper. There we go. Flat nose did it a little bit better. So I'm just coming up to start my U. Now, on the U, what I don't like is a lot of extra lines and stuff in my pieces. So on my U, I'm actually going to bend the wire and I'm gonna bring the flat nose plier right up next to the S so that the top of the U will be in line with the top of the S and bend this back straight over itself. So let me turn it to the side so you can see what I did. Now it's, it's kind of icky, so I'm gonna squeeze it together. Get my fingers out of the way in just a second. Squeeze that together so it's nice and tight. So as you look at it from the front, you almost can't even see that there's two wires there. Pull that down just a little bit. Now, back to that four millimeter. Get right on that mark with there and pull up into a U shape. And if it comes, see it's too low right there. If it comes too low, then what you want to do is just take this and turn it, bring it up, turn it, bring it up until it's right in line with the bottom of the S. Perfect. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and try to get it as even as possible. So straighten everybody up, go back up to the top, grab this right here, bend it back, over on itself. See, so you can't see it, but then when I look from the side I say, oh, I gotta fix that. So you're going to give it a squeeze again until it squeezes together. And sometimes it'll flip over on you like that, so just Bring it back into line, and, oh, well, it just wants to be different. Grab and squeeze. So here's what I've got so far. See, looks pretty good. Not too bad. Okay, you guys can go home now. I'm just kidding. All right, that's your S and your U. So you see what I'm doing is I, I'm literally just writing with wire. So whatever your handwriting is, just kind of go with it. But I will tell you, overlapping, things like that, really looks nice. On this one, I kind of, and you see everyone turns out a little bit different too. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason. See here on this one, what I did is I didn't overlap it. You don't have to overlap like I did. I like it a little bit better overlap. This one I did. So you can see kind of the difference. And it's personal preference, really. I've also done my A's two different ways in these. This one I did like a little capital A. That one I did a rounded A. It's just kind of whatever you're feeling at the time. So now I'm gonna take my flat nose plier again and grab this and bend this back up again so that I'm ready to start my next letter, which is an S, because my name is Susan. So I'm gonna try to make it as similar as possible to, as, the, as I did to the other one, but it probably won't be exactly the same. So we're gonna come up and grab that flat nose plier again, grab right at the top, try to even with the top of the U and the other S, and bend this back down into that kind of pinched shape that we started our last S in. So I'm gonna squeeze that together. Let me just show you what I did. See how I squeezed it? Squeeze, squeeze, and then pull it out so it starts to form that S shape. Then back to my four millimeters that I used and wrap that around and behind and in. And then here you just wanna check yourself. Are we in line on the bottom? Looks pretty close. So then grab it with the two and pull that up and over. So now I've got S-U-S. -S. Super cute. And then, see now if your things are looking a little bit, like I feel like that one's a little low, you can kind of use your fingers to 
manipulate the wire just a little bit, just try to keep it flat. All right, now here I have a whole decision to make because I have to decide if I wanna do my A like that or if I wanna do my A like this. So I'm gonna go with the, the rounded A. Um, A's are one of the hardest letters to do because you've gotta get all the way over and around like this and make that little loop on the other side. Or if you go like with a, with a capital A, you've gotta go up, down halfway, and then across and over. So A's can be a little bit complicated. So what I'm going to do is once again come down here to the bottom with my flat nose plier and bring that wire up to start the next letter. So you want to try to get it even down there at the bottom. And I didn't, I'm a little bit off, so let me try to go a little bit, a little bit farther over like that. There we go. All right, so now I am ready to start my A. So now A is also kind of a roundy letter. So instead of using my four millimeter, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move up on my plier to a five millimeter. And that's just personal experience. As I've done this, I've noticed if I use too small of a, of a loop for that rounded A, it just looks like you've got like this big S and this big U and this, and this uh, you know, big N and this tiny little A. So I'm gonna go to the five millimeter on my plier. And I'm going to wrap this around here, trying to get that top of the A right even with the top of the S. And you've got to go all the way around the plier two times to get that A right. So right now it just kind of looks like a big loop. But I'm gonna give it a little bit of a squeeze because A's really aren't super round, they kind of have a little bit of an elongated shape. So I'm going to take my flat nose plier and that's what's gonna even this all up and make it more of an oval shape. Dun, 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 dun. Like that. See? Now, my A just needs to be finished off. So grab the flat nose plier down at the bottom, even with the rest, and bring it up like so. There, if my name was Sousa, we'd be done. Pretty simple. So now we just have to finish with the N. And on the end, you got a little up down stuff to do because you got, you know how ends have that little, I, I don't know, I, I don't love cursive ends because usually they're like this, but I kind of like the ones that look almost like it's a line. The way I make mine is there's a line and then an, the end is like that. So I, I like to do mine like that. You guys can do a double N if you want to, but imagine if you were doing an M and you were doing a, a lowercase cursive M and it'd be lump, 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 like, I don't know. So you have to think about it. So my thought is to make a line like this, just like I did with the U, and then make the N. So that's what I'm gonna do. And boy, I'll tell you what, I was, I, I was tight on the wire here, wasn't I? So up at the top, try to make everybody even, and bend this down. So it's straight down, just like I did with the U. So from the top, it looks like this, but then from the side, it looks like that. So I've gotta squeeze that baby down. And then if you flip it over like that, just flip it back. Just like so, and give it another squeeze. Okay, so there's the front of my end, and then I'm going to bring this directly back up next to that, like so. And I actually have to pull this out a little bit so I can pinch it tight and then I'll push it back in. Wire is very forgiving, but it will remember where you, where you bend it so um, it's funny, wire has a memory. Have you, did you guys know that? It actually remembers what you do with it. It's funny, it's like an elephant. So if, once you do something with it, it's gonna go right back to that place. So if you don't love what you've done, you might have to start over. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so now I've got my end ready to go. I'm gonna go back to that four millimeter that I used and bring this down and around into that N shape. I think it needs to be a little bit lower like so. So there is my name, Susan. Pretty cute, right? And so now here's the thing. If we want this to be a necklace, very important. We don't want our little loops on the side to be here. We want them to be up here. So you're going to have to do some things to kind of make those loops come up to the side. You can get kind of crazy with it, make like little curly cues, whatever you want to. I'm just going to bring mine up and make two little simple loops at the top. So bring that over, bring that down, and I'm going to trim my wire after I get it in the right spot. So bring my end up at the end so it's kind of clear that I'm finished with my name. 
and then do the same thing on this other side. Just right in line with the bottom of your letter, bring that up just like so. And we're going to hammer this to give it a little bit of structure, a little bit of temper so that it won't fall apart. So that's where I am now, just like that. Now for this step, I'm just going to trim my wires and I'm just going to go about three eighths of an inch above the top of my letters, like so and like so. And then I am going to take a round nose plier. I know I have a lot of tools here, guys, but it takes lots of tools. And then I'm going to bring it around into a loop. And this is the part where I always just kind of use my best judgment as to how high up I want this little loop to go. That looks pretty good. And then let's do the other side, like so. And so to me, that looks a little bit high, so I'm gonna shorten that up just a little bit. And bring it around. And then I like to bring it in pretty close to the name. Just like so. Now, I'm gonna get my little bench block out here. Be very careful when you do this part because you don't want to hammer down on any of the wire that's overlapping because you can actually cut a piece of wire by doing that. So the only parts that I'm going to hammer are pieces that actually are not overlapped. So first of all, those two little curly cues that are around on the end, those guys need to be hammered. And honestly, the more you hammer them, kind of the higher end this is going to look. At the end of my end, I'm going to give it a little hammer and the top of my end, I'm going to give it a little hammer. And then I'm going to very lightly and gently kind of hammer the rest of it, not hard because I don't want any of those wires to get mixed up. And then I'm going to hammer that other loop, the top of the S. And if you have to, you can go to the ball peen side of your hammer and just hit that just a little tiny bit at the top of that S and a little tiny bit at the top of this S and a little tiny bit at the bottom of the A. And then turn it over and just very gently, you can do this with the rawhide too, just kind of bring that into shape and then shape it back up like so, let me get that guy perfect. And then your loops probably opened up just a little bit when you were doing that, so make sure they're closed, either by closing them back up with a round nose plier or by opening and closing them with a flat nose plier, like so. And then that okay, is ready to go. The only thing I have left to do on that, isn't that pretty? That's fun, isn't it? Now you can leave it shiny like that if you want to. That is my, um, that's my shiny version. Uh, or you can oxidize it, and I'll show you how to do that with something called silver black. So if you're if you're started doing this and, and everything just looks terrible, I want you to remember something. It's handmade, okay? And it, it, I've, I've worked with so many designers that I've showed them how to do something, and they tried to do it the way I did it, and then they did it totally different. And maybe their S's and their U's and everything are, are kind of up and down. That might be your design. That might end up being the next best thing. You might be the next biggest designer because you make a crooked name. But listen, if you get started and you're working with copper wire, which is very inexpensive, and you don't like what you've done, don't try to straighten your wire out and, 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 and start over again with that piece. Just cut yourself a new piece of wire. Literally 11 cents to make that name. So you know what, copper you can recycle, so put that in a little recycle bin, recycle that copper and start over with a new piece of wire. But that's why I recommend starting with big inexpensive wire when you're starting. This is aluminum wire that I wrote these words with and it's, it's inexpensive and, and honestly I wasn't super happy with how Thrive turned out, but I kind of kept it even though I didn't like my eye because it's not awful. It's one of my very first ones I ever did. Don't start with sterling silver on your very first name. Because if you start with sterling and you mess up, you're gonna be sad. So start with copper or aluminum. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna oxidize this, show you how you can oxidize the copper. I like to use an oxidized copper on a sterling silver chain because I just think it's a really, really pretty look. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take this stuff. This is called silver black. It's very corrosive and it turns copper black really, really quickly. But it doesn't smell and that's why I'm not using liver of sulfur today because I have several people in the room with me and they don't like my liver of sulfur, I will tell you. But that's another way to do it. You can also um, hard boil some eggs, crunch them up, put them in a Tupperware, stick the baby in there for overnight. 24 hours usually is a good amount of time and then pull it back out and it'll be beautifully oxidized. So this stuff is also hard to find. So if, if you guys ask like 80,000 questions about how to find silver black, 
I probably won't be able to explain it to you because literally this is about the last that I have of it. But um, if you just look for um, oxidizing solutions, that's probably the best way to find stuff like this. Now I will tell you this is not good for your hands, not good for your tools, it's not good for anything. I've corroded tools. I've corroded more tools with silver black than any other thing out there. So always keep it away from everything you use. So I'm just gonna dip down just a little bit of this in there so you can see how quickly this turns and then I'll finish oxidizing the rest of it. But look, I'll just dip it down just like that and look, see how fast it turned black? Pretty amazing, right? All right, so let me dip the whole thing down in there on one side. I'm gonna not get my fingers in it because I don't like what happens to them after I get that in there. Uh, I used to have an employee that would just dip her fingers right in there and I'm always like, why? <laughs> so it doesn't have a skull and crossbones on it anymore, but the old bottles that I used to get did. So I thought mm, it's best not to get on my fingers. So there it is, super, super dark. Let me pour the rest of this back in my bottle so that I don't have to worry about it hitting any of my tools. And I'm using a plastic container. Okay, I have to talk to you guys just for a second. I'm using a plastic container for this corrosive, why? Well, I learned the hard way. If you put it into a metal container, it actually, it actually causes a uh, reaction, a chemical reaction. It starts bubbling up and burns its way through the metal. So, <laughs> use plastic. All right, so, I'm, so if you do happen to find some of this stuff, it, it's something to be uh, careful with. Liver of sulfur is definitely safer, but a lot stinkier. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a little bit of steel wool and bring out the highlights on my name, just like so. And then backside. So it is messy, you guys see that it's very messy to use steel wool, but it's, it's honestly the best way to do this. And then I've got this is called a, a brass brush, and that will kind of polish it back up. You can also use a polishing cloth if you want to. But the brass brush will give it a really, really shiny finish. And the steel will won't. They'll give it more of a matte finish. So there we go. That's that. And so now let me clean this up, and then I'll attach it to my necklace. So here we go. Here's my necklace. This is literally just a 16-inch necklace that I cut the center of. And I'm going to use some jump rings that I'm about to make here to attach this. You guys ever made jump rings? Bonus. Uh, what you want to do is just make sure you make them both the same size. So I'm working on that three millimeter mark on my AccuLoop plier. Just make sure you flush cut them from one side and then the other so you have a nice flat connection. There's one and I'll do another one. Oops. Sorry, can't see. Let's see. Okay, so I move everything out of the way. Don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore. But I do need my flat nose pliers. So I'm just going to bring that open and attach here and here. Close that up, like so. Got a little extra chain there. Let me clip that off. Perfecto. And then other side, grab another jump ring and twist it open. Best way to open and close a jump ring is to use two tools, like so. Twist open, attach. I've got extra on this, so let me clip that off. So attach it to your link here, attach it to the top of your word here, and then twist it close, just like so. So now I have a name necklace. Okay, so 
To do this project, you're gonna need some tools and supplies. First of all, you're gonna need some wire. I recommend starting with copper wire or aluminum wire before you graduate to sterling. Uh, but once you get to sterling, you're gonna have lots of fun. Now, I use 20 gauge in my project, so that's a really great, great place to start. Uh, as far as tools and supplies are concerned, you're going to need some round nose pliers. This is just a basic round nose plier. This one is called an AccuLoop plier, and it's the one that's marked, which is great for doing this project, so you don't have to remember where you were working on your plier. Next up, you're gonna want some flat nose and chain nose pliers. I have a flat and a chain here for getting in those little nooks and crannies and for squeezing those pieces. And then, of course, a really good flush cutter to finish everything off. So these are those optional tools that I use. This is a brass brush and a piece of steel wool. And this is some oxidizing solution that I use to make my copper dark. And these are the things that I use to shine it back up again. Completely optional. It's only if you want to oxidize your piece if you've used sterling or bare copper. If you're using plated wire, just put all that away because you are not going to be able to oxidize it. And then this is my steel bench block and my chasing hammer that I use to hammer out the edges of my wire and make it a little bit sturdier so it's gonna hold its shape while it's on your neck. Also, if you use plated wire, remember, very, very light hammering because you can take the plating off with the hammering. But that's just about everything we need. I did use a sterling silver chain to finish mine off, but you can use whatever chain you want to, so you guys can get started. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys would like to pick up some supplies like the ones I worked with today, check out the links down below. What inspirational word would you use if you were making your own personalized necklace? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And now that you know a little bit about making personalized jewelry, you can say, I made this. <laughs>